Hey, Phil. Hi there. Welcome to Carta. We're excited to have you here for a tour today and look at our electric vehicle ecosystem. Thank you, sir. So, so Philip, why did Carta select electric buses? Carta started with electric buses back in 1992, a downtown electric shuttle program as a way to move people around the city with a park once and travel about and, and see the city. So as part of that project, we developed the downtown electric shuttle, downtown parking garages, and that expanded into the North Shore shuttle later on. Just last year, Carta acquired these BYD K9S 35-foot all-battery electric buses. Uh, they went into service in March 2019 and have been operating successfully since then. About a year and a half successful operation yeah. so far. Okay. And so, you know, obviously diesel versus electric, but for, for you guys, well, what's the difference between a diesel and an electric? I think the primary difference is, is low noise, clean energy operation. So zero tailpipe emissions here, um, and then lower noise operation through neighborhoods especially, and with downtown congestion, uh, and then hopefully lower total cost of ownership uh, at the end of the day. So being able to um, reduce our maintenance costs, as well as creating more or uh, less volatility in terms of fuel prices. In, in total cost of ownership, important for other mass transit agencies, they have to save green backs to get to the green side of what we would like to see. Yeah. And uh, so these are quite a bit more expensive, but that total cost of ownership is just the metric that shows how much am I saving on maintenance yet, how much extra capital expense exists. Yeah. How do we make that work? Yeah. So studies today show, you know, potentially a 25%, a 25 cents per mile lower total cost of ownership. So about how far does a bus go? Uh, this particular BYD has an anticipated range of 150 miles. That is obviously impacted by things such as road gradient, weather, uh, temperature, road gradients, uh, and the route it's on. But in our experience, we've had really no range issues whatsoever. Uh, this particular vehicle is equipped with a Momentum Dynamics wireless inductive charging unit. And we installed a charger at our, one of our downtown terminals, uh, but we have not had to use that in our daily service today. So the bus typically runs its morning route, its afternoon route, and then comes back here to the bus barn to be charged. And a lot of that is because a typical route for um, a car to bus is how far? A typical day of service is about 100, 110 miles. So 150 works well. You should be able to get back without issue. Absolutely. Okay. And um, what's what's the life of the batteries or, or I guess some of the components that are in this? Uh, this vehicle comes with a 12 year warranty, including the battery uh, as part of our FPA procurement for the vehicle. Uh, so we we are pleased with that arrangement and hopefully everything will last for that long. What does a diesel bus come with? Uh, same type, oh, really? 12 okay. year commitment. So that's the FPA uh, lifespan for the vehicle. Well, why don't we go take a look at the back? Certainly. Well, these are some of the, the components that are in the all electrical buses. You have the, um, the power distribution box, which I consider is the main brain operation of it. You have two sets of batteries, the VTGO um, from your air compressor. You got two different cooling reservoirs. This particular bus has three sets of batteries. These are two batteries here. We have two down on the lower, we have two on the upper. So tell us some of the environmental benefits of choosing an electric mass transit bus. So obviously Chattanooga was recognized as the dirtiest city in America back in the late 60s. And electrification is a, an excellent solution to reducing our, our pollutants in the air. Um, zero emission at the tailpipe, 
Uh, at some point, we may be able to develop solar generation here at Carta. Got a big roof right over here. Uh, we do. We have a 50 kilowatt solar generation right now. Uh, it's not doing anything with fueling our buses. That energy is going back to the grid. But we hope one day to be able to have solar generation and power storage available to fuel the electric buses. Uh, but in terms of the emissions and air quality, uh, we've seen from a public health perspective, especially our neighborhoods that we primarily serve throughout the city, uh, we see examples in, in low income and minority communities uh, that suffer health disparities. Improving the air quality is essential and being able to uh, operate a fully clean energy bus in those environments, uh, we think is a great benefit. And the, the, the benefit to the humans in the area, obviously in an urban area, a diesel tailpipe around a lot of people, especially limited income neighborhoods, is, is a problem. And we need to try to change that. And so this removes that tailpipe from that location situation. It does indeed. And they're very quiet, which is just when you're running a lot of buses in a congested environment, it reduces that traffic noise. Um, studies show that traffic noise leads to stress. And if we can do our part to minimize that. Uh, it's a nice, good, um, smooth ride. Uh, whenever you um, put on your accelerator, it, it, it takes off very uh, smooth. And when you get up off the accelerator, it starts slowing you down. As you get up off the accelerator, it slows down to where eventually it takes you to a complete stop without you putting on, actually putting on your brake. So, and I like that. And when the turn rate shows are really good, and you go up many times, and, um, and the flow of it is very smooth, so and it's not noisy, so I enjoy it. I like that more than that. So this is our proprietary BYD charging station, uh, providing 80 kilowatts of power through two 40 kilowatt plugs, uh, charging the entire bus in about three hours uh, to take it to a full charge. Hi, my name is uh, Ronnie Smith. I'm the electric vehicle specialist here at Carter. I'm going to show you how do I go through the procedures of charging this electrical bus. I initially make sure I have the right bus for the right charger because I want to make sure I keep my numbers accurate. I will get the hub meter reading. Go back, get the last reading of the kilowatts charge from the last charging, which is four, three, three, six, eight. Which I already had it written down before I get started. This are the, this is the charging ports where I connect the charger. Okay, I will make sure everything's safe and secure. Read my indications, make sure they're connected. Press start. It goes through a cycle. That's a safety latch kicking in. The second phase of charging will start very shortly. Okay, this particular bus is, it shows you how much charge is on the battery, how much left that we need to charge. It's 97% charge, it's basically fully charged. Um, it indicates the amp hours, the voltage, uh, how, how long it estimated charge to get it to 100%. Right now it says this particular bus will be completely charged in nine minutes. And it, once you get through charging, you calculate kilowatts that you have already, that was put back into the bus and recorded. The reason why I think this, by us having the electric buses is important to me. For one, it gives me an opportunity to learn different and new technology. Considering that Chattanooga is going basically green, it's good for the environment. It's good for the future of my kids and my grandkids.
So we're on board one of the K9 BYD buses, and you know this is where the riders get to experience this bus. So what, what's the feedback and response been from the riders? Uh, the public was very excited for CAR to have new buses, and the electric bus specifically is very quiet going through the neighborhood. It gives a very nice smooth ride. Uh, decelerates very smoothly with regenerative braking. Uh, so I think it's been a good experience for the public. That's great. It's kind of hard to find a downside, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. I don't know what someone would complain about. Exactly. Uh, and, and to that end, uh, so getting leadership to make this move, you know, Chattanooga, Chattanooga has a long history of doing a number of things in this way, but was it hard to convince leadership that this is something you guys should try out? Not at all. I think this was a great opportunity building on the foundation of experience with the electric shuttle program for nearly 30 years. And over the years, CARTA has been innovative in other areas, from launching a public bike share system in 2002, Bike Chattanooga, uh, which now has e-bike technology, so offering micro-mobility solutions. And then in 2016, partnered with TBA to launch a solar-assisted electric vehicle charging and car share program to serve as a public charging opportunity for electric vehicles, and specifically to give an extension to public transit with public car share. So for example, someone could ride a bike share bike to a bus stop, take a bus, go to their destination, and then if they need to travel beyond the bus route, have a car share available to complete that trip. An uh, electric ecosystem. Absolutely. Wow. So, and, and all of that is still in use. Green Commuter, I think, did go away, but you have to try new things and see what will work for your community. Yeah, Screen Commuter was a great uh, test. We operated that for three years uh, through 2019, so we have a lot of good data and understand best how to reintroduce that to the community. So really looking for opportunities to give people clean energy and safe, accessible transportation choices. Everything from walking, biking, using public transit, to parking their own vehicle. It's part of it is also the Chattanooga Parking Authority. So we want to offer a continuum of choice for people to use the right tool for the right trip. And, and the leadership at CARTA uh, had the open minds uh, to, to try this because there's a history of that. Absolutely, it's, it's known as the Chattanooga Way. A variety of public and private partnerships, everything from developing our public garages as part of the electric shuttle program to expanding uh, public transit, neighborhood shuttle routes, uh, paratransit service for those with disabilities, uh, it's really just about providing mobility for the community. Well, and so now might be a good time to ask this question. So you've had three buses for a year and a half. What, what, what is the near future or the, the even further away look like for maybe further electric vehicles in the system? Uh, we're definitely working to expand the fleet. We do have funding in place uh, for new electric vehicles as well as larger scale fleet replacement. Uh, there is still that discussion about the capital acquisition costs of an electric versus total ownership uh, and how best to move forward. And then there are serious questions about infrastructure development, what's required uh, to power that system, and also about resiliency. Uh, does it make sense to have a single fuel type fleet? Or if you do have a mixed fuel fleet, um, what's the proper balance of that? So we're here at Shuttle Park South, which is CARTA's electric vehicle maintenance and shuttle park terminal, as well as a parking garage up above us that serves the public. Um, back in the day, in the early 90s, uh, these buses were actually manufactured here in Chattanooga by a company called ABS. Uh, eventually, eBus came on the scene and some of our buses have been updated. We have 2006 and 2013 models. Uh, we currently operate 14 electric shuttles in and around downtown and on the North Shore of Chattanooga and we handle close to 1 million passengers per year. A variety of tourists, residents, downtown employees. Um, it's a full mix. Big Charger is something new for us here at Carta. Uh, we're using it on the mainline buses only at the current moment. Uh, the way it works is the driver pulls in, hits a predetermined target, puts the bus in neutral, sets the parking brake, and nails the bus to the ground. And then the computer in the bus talks to the computer in the charger and uh, looks at the battery level, the discharge amount, and then comes on and charges appropriately. And it will charge up to 200 amp hours 
uh, per minute or as low as 50, depending on what the bus needs. There are four pads under the bus. There's two on this side, two on the other side. Each pad puts out uh, 50 amps of charge. Uh, so, when the, like I said, when the bus comes in, it determines the amount of discharge in the batteries and turns on the appropriate amount of pads to charge the batteries back up. A lot of it comes down to available funding opportunities. So if there are specific funding programs such as CMAC, congestion mitigation air quality, that are specifically focused on things such as air quality improvement, then I think that that's a primary driver of what's available on the fixed route fleet. Obviously, we'd invested in the electric shuttles much earlier, but I think having available funding sources as a public transit agency is the critical point for us. From a public transportation, obviously investment in public transportation, I would argue, is a good use of public funds, uh, providing mobility and accessibility for people of all uh, incomes, abilities, and everything, really just being the framework uh, to provide mobility for the community. Uh, so I would argue that's a good investment. And then the second part of that question would be, is electric vehicle, electrification of that investment a good idea? Um, it appears to be. Uh, obviously, the, the capital expense is a little bit more right now, but again, the early evidence shows the total cost of ownership uh, is good. <clears throat> so we think it's, it's a good opportunity to, to test it, evaluate it. And that part's the important part as well, is we're not doing this blindly. We are evaluating it as we go along and we're reporting back to the people who invest in us, whether that's the public or through the public, our government. Um, so we feel it's, it's a good strategy. I think Chattanooga represents a great living laboratory and represents the mid-sized city in America of which you know, we have huge transit environments in places like San Francisco, New York, Chicago, but there's only a handful of those side cities. Most of America is mid-sized or smaller. So I think we represent a great opportunity to do research. I think we've demonstrated that this community is open to innovation. It's open to flexibility and, and trying new things. Uh, trying new things is often challenging and not sometimes brings difficulties. Um, but being open to that experimentation, I think, is very important. So I think having that culture of innovation uh, has been a foundation of what we've been doing. Um, bike share, public bike share in a mid-sized city, we were very early, uh, ahead of many major markets, and that's still operating. Electric vehicle car share, we were very early, and certainly with the electric shuttle program, we were very early. So I, th I think we've demonstrated our our inclination towards that type of innovation. And it's something we hope to continue to do. We think there's value in it and we think it benefits the community as a whole. I think long-term that opportunity to drive a car everywhere is a, a, a non-successful scenario. Uh, while we all have that privilege and opportunity to do so now, at some point, from a congestion standpoint, it's just simply not going to be possible. Uh, it's a geometry problem. If it's only one person in one automobile, you can only fit so many in some, so much room. So having the opportunity and flexibility for mass transit and micromobility. So, I mean, it's, it's about that spectrum of choice. Automobiles are great. Electric automobiles perhaps are even better, but at some point mass transit is the framework of moving people through a city. And we, we think that's the, the foundation for the future.